Spam, you are live. Oh. We'll do a little sound. <laughs> All right. Let's see if uh, the feed pops up here. Yeah. I'm not showing. Oh, there I am. Okay. All right, let's check the sound, right? We got sound on a couple second delay. All right, welcome everybody. Hi, Brian. Oh, you got the sheet? Okay. All kinds of stuff happening here today. <laughs> so welcome to the T350 show. It's almost, huh? It's almost Christmas. We got a few more days. And I haven't bought a present yet. <laughs> I'm going. I'm going after work. To all I buy is for the wife. She buys everything else. I don't. I just buy for her, and she takes care of all the rest of it. I'm not. I don't do well in big crowds and lots of people, and I'm not a shopping guy, unless we're going to Cabela's or Bass Pro Shop or something. Then I can shop. <laughs> right. So, uh, let's see. We got a whole lot of stuff going on here today. I don't think it'll be a super long show, but everybody's tuning in for the big giveaway here we're going to do at the end of the show. So, uh, we're going to talk about gun cases just a little bit. Um, you know, uh, you bought an AR, you built your AR, whatever it might be, and uh, you need somewhere to store it. Um you know, obviously, you want to have a safe at home. Um, having a gun safe, making sure your guns are locked away, especially if you have little ones in the house. You have kids in the house, you want to make sure your guns are, are, are stored away in a safe and appropriate manner. Um, if you don't have little ones in the house, I don't anymore. All my kids are grown and gone on. So, uh, you know, I, I, keep a, I keep a couple things handy within arm's reach if I need them in the middle of the night i don't want to have to search i don't want to have to but uh you know I, I i am safe with them if someone's coming over people are coming over then i get it they get put away um but you know um like if you're going to go to the, uh some outdoor ranges aren't as particular about it um yeah my diet coke's back because i'm not advertising for them i'm just <laughs> i'm a diet coke fan <laughs> um yeah, we'll talk about flying with a gun in a minute. We'll, we'll, I'll help you out a little bit with that. I've done it a few times, so um, I got a couple little tips and tricks for you. But uh, you know, you want to go to the range. Uh, some outdoor ranges are a little more lenient with um, uh, their rules about it, but for sure, indoor ranges, they don't want you even coming in the door unless you have your gun in some kind of case. So you're going to shoot your pistol, you know, at a bare minimum. You're going to want something like this that you can put your pistol in, put a box of ammo in there with it. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and, you know, you can walk in with something like that, and they're okay with that, okay? Uh, something like this. You know, you can put your pistol in here. You can put a box of ammo in here. Um, now, all that being said, uh depends on the state you live in but here in ohio if you don't have a concealed carry permit and you want to travel with a gun in your car the gun has to be unloaded one and two the ammo and the gun cannot be readily accessible to each other kind of vague language uh open to interpretation a little bit but by readily accessible you can't um, if the ammo was in here in a, you know, the, the magazine and you can just open this up and like that, and you've got a loaded gun, that's kind of readily accessible. Okay. So if I'm, before I had my CCW permit, if I was doing traveling, I would put my gun in this case, and then I had another separate ammo box and I would put my ammo in the box and I would have the two separated from each other. Therefore, I would have to open this, get the gun, open this, get the ammo, and then put the two together. 
that does not meet the definition of readily accessible. Okay, so, you know, just make sure you know your state laws when you're transporting a gun to and from the range, to and from hunting, whatever it might be. Um, making sure, you know, we don't want anybody getting in trouble. Okay. Um, this, uh, they gave me this, they gave me a couple of these at the show. We were down in Florida. The guys from Taurus were across the booth from us. And I said, hey, I got a Taurus pistol. He's like, here, you need a couple cases for your pistols. And I was like, hey, all right. I'm never going to refuse that, right? And I'm not sure where I got this one. I may have won this at a raffle or something as a side raffle table prize or something. I'm not sure, but it's a nice little pistol. So, um, you know, we deal with ARs here, so we're going to talk a little bit about cases. Um, you got two really main choices when it comes to your AR case, uh, soft sided case and a hard sided case. Um, you know, this is kind of my go to bag for if i'm going to the range i'm going to the outdoor range i like to go to the grand river wildlife area range uh this is a nice bag because i can fit three or four guns in here this is called a, a two gun bag but you know i can fit two carbines in here you know there's a partition in the middle to protect them from each other there's velcro stra velcro straps to hold them in place we got a partition to protect them from each other, Velcro strapping, pockets for your muzzle and your buttstock, okay? And then you put another carbine in here. Then if I want to take my AR pistol with me, I got another compartment right here that I can put my carbine pistol in there with me, okay? You got just all kinds of places compartments places for magazines okay and what really does this one for me I like these because when I get to the range if I've got a separate ammo box or I'm taking my tripod with me or maybe I'm going long range that day and I got to carry my tripod or my uh, spotting scope right I grab a hold of this thing and I throw it up on my back. And now I got hands free to carry my tripod, carry my ammo box, carry my spotting scope, whatever it might be. And I got all my guns and off I go to the range. Okay, and everything's packed away real nice, right? This is definitely my favorite range bag. Now, uh, this one, you know, Despite the American flag on it, it was not made here. Um, this is about a, a $50, $60 bag. Um, I can guarantee you this type of bag, if you're getting it for 50 or 60 bucks, it ain't made here, okay? Uh, if you get a good American made one, a savior, something like that, uh, you know, they're gonna be 100 plus, you know, 150 plus, $200. Uh, <laughs> Uh, let's see. I'm trying to catch up on the comments here. But, uh, you know, and everything locks in real nice. Also Velcros. And then you can, right, so nothing's going to fall out of there. It's just a really nice, you know, despite it being not made here in America, it's a really nice bag. All right. It's my go-to. But not... TSA compliant you cannot fly with this right because you can't lock it there's nowhere to lock this thing and even if you could a pocket knife and I'm in this thing okay the idea of uh, TSA compliant cases is that nobody else can access it except for you so hard cases right this is a single gun hard case uh, what is this? Promex Pillar Lock. Okay. Flambeau, Plano, they all make good, right? This is, uh, you know, uh, probably a $30, $40 case. Um, I don't know that this would be TSA compliant. I don't know if even if it was TSA compliant that I'd want to put my gun in here and uh, 
trust that it would not get damaged. Um, we've all seen how the guys at the airport handle luggage, right? <laughs> there it goes up into the plane, right? This thing, you know, it's not super sturdy, right? I use this um, if I'm going hunting with the guys and I know I got to put my gun in the bed of the truck. I can't put it in the back seat where it's going to be safe in my range bag. I'm going to put it in this and I'm going to slide it in the back of the truck. And if it slides around a little bit, bumps up against the sidewalls, whatever, it's not going to get hurt anything. It's not going to damage anything. If I set something light on top of it, again, I'm not going to damage anything. Speaking of damaging anything, you put your gun, your AR in here. This is the top, right? This is the carry handles. Okay. When you put your weapons in here, you want to put them with your optics up your scope facing up, right? If you drop them in there with the scope facing down and you're walking with this thing and you drop it, guess what hit the ground first? Your scope, okay? Good chance you, if you didn't destroy your scope, it's not going to hit where <laughs> it's not going to have a, a, a point of impact zero anymore. Flying with a hard case, okay? So, uh, you're gonna, you want to go on a plane. The first piece of information I'll give you, getting back to the comment about it being a pain in the butt and uh, the, the rules being different. And once I know what flight, what airline I'm flying, I go to their website and I download their rules and regulations for flying with a weapon. Then I print those out. <laughs> Brian wants to buy a tank. <laughs> That's the comment about the tank. Brian wants to get a tank. Um, so we're trying to figure out how to get him a little shell for over top of his golf cart. So his golf cart looks like a tank. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, um, go on the airline's website, print out what their regulations are. Okay, know the regulations, print them out. Um, take that print out with you to the airport because I have seen on more than one occasion where the ticket agent at the de at the desk doesn't really understand the rules and regulations and they're going to tell you you can't you you can't have the ammo in there you can't you know you can't do this you can't look it says right here in your rules and regulations this is what I need to do this is what I'm doing okay and then if they have a problem obviously they'll call the supervisor or they'll call a TSA agent over and they'll get it straightened out but it helps to have those rules and regulations right there there's no arguing with them when they see look this is right off your website here's your rules okay and i'm following your rules um has to be in a hard case has to go in check baggage either like something small like this can go right inside your luggage right inside your suitcase they'll open it up put a uh, tag in there and off your luggage will go and then typically they'll ask you so locks before I get into that real quick right most of these cases this case has four locking points okay one two three four okay this case has two locking points one two every locking point has to have a lock doesn't matter if there's 10 locking points on that case. The TSA says every locking point has to have a lock. Go get yourself a set of locks that all take one key. Okay? And I'll tell you this because when this goes back behind the wall and they check it, they're going to x-ray it. And if it looks like it's loaded, if they're not sure about something, they, they're going to tell you, okay, go stand over here. If TSA doesn't come out and get you in 10 minutes, you can go to your plane. Okay, so you go over there and you stand in the thing and you wait your 10 minutes. And I've seen them come out and ask somebody for the key to their gun case because they need to check something out. So you got four locks on there. You got four keys. And you're right. Now you got a TSA agent that's aggravated because he's got to try to figure out which key fits which lock and he's probably not going to want to be real cooperative, cooperative with you, right? So buy a set of locks, no, however many you need, that take one key, okay? And they're right, pretty simple. 
The other reason why I don't, um, you know, if you're going to fly a lot with, say, a, a rifle, you know, I, I take my CCW pistol with me where I'm allowed. Okay. See, I ain't getting in that, right? You're going to have to destroy this box to get in there. Okay. And that's what they want to see is, is it's not accessible. Um, the thing about these $30 cases, right? If I put a lock here and a lock here, okay, I'll go ahead and do that real quick. Okay. Now I could pop these open. And I could pry this apart, right? See? And I can get in there. If there was I can get my hand all the way down in there and I could get a hold of that gun. And I could probably pull a gun out of there if I had to. Okay, so if you're gonna fly with a rifle, I recommend spending several hundred dollars on a Pelican or a uh, Nanook, something like that, that is going to be absolutely positive locking. Um, when you close it, it's got clamps, and at every clamp there's a locking point. You ain't getting in one of them, right? You can't pry it apart like you can. This is just really thin plastic. And again, I don't I wouldn't trust this with my $1,000 rifle in the belly of an airplane. <coughs> so, uh, you know, all depends on what you want to spend and what your purpose is, is. If you're not flying with a plane, or if you're not flying with a plane, you know, hopefully you're flying with a plane. If you're not flying with a gun, um, there you go. That's not a bad idea. P a piece of color tape on each lock and then a, a piece of color tape on each key. That makes it real simple. Not a bad idea at all. If you do have to use different locks and different keys, at least you can say, right, match up the colors and it'll open. <coughs> uh, they wouldn't let you take it. Had to leave it. In, had to leave your gun in your car. Uh, I'm trying to go back and read the comments here. James said. Uh, Two handguns and two ARs in it and threw the lock on it. Was told each gun had to have an individual lock TSA case. Oh, man, I'm not... Again, you know, that's where I would print out the rules and regulations and uh, make sure that you understand, you know, if you're doing something like that, that it's spelled out. Um, can you have more than one gun in a case? Uh, you know, and, and just make sure you have that stuff with you so that when they tell you you can't have this... Well, look, your paper says I can, okay? So you better go get me a supervisor because we're going to talk about this. <laughs> so, um, hi, Ron. What's up, buddy? So, uh, you know, there's a ton of choices out there. You look up gun cases and there's literally thousands, if not tens of thousands of choices out there. And, uh, you know, you got to decide, one, what you're going to do with it. Um and two, how much you want to spend, right? Because, you know, some of these Pelicans, multi-gun Pelicans, man, whew, you can spend five, six, seven, eight hundred dollars on a gun case real quick. Uh, yeah, I, I, you know, when they got you, they got you. Um, you know, I don't know. I don't know the situation in the the airline, but that's why I always print out the rules and make sure I have them with me. So, uh, you know, anywhere from, like I said, $20, $30 on up to hundreds of dollars, right? You can spend whatever you want, but it all dic it's all dictated by what you're going to do with it. And uh, if you're just hunting, going to the range, you know, a, a $30 to $50 case, a $20 to $30 pistol box or uh, pistol sleeve is going to be more than adequate for you and again just make sure you know your laws local every state has weird little nuances to their laws make sure you know your state's laws when it comes to carrying guns and ammunition in the car together um we drove down there and i had my guns 
in the hard case, and then I had the ammo in a separate locked box. And I, I made sure that, because I knew I was going to be traveling through a bunch of different states, and I, you know, trying to keep six or seven different states together in your mind of what the rules are and what's not. You put the guns in one case, you lock it. You put the ammo in another case, you lock it, and you're going to be good for any state other than, you know, don't travel through New York or California. That's all I can, right? Stay around the speed limit. Yeah, and stay around the speed limit. So, uh, I'm well, Maxwell. Thank you. I hope everyone, I hope you have a good Christmas. Uh, yeah, I, I've flown a few times with my CCW and I haven't had an issue. Um, I do go to the extra limit, extra lengths when I put my pistol in here. Um, the magazines are empty. The ammo is in the original box that it came in. And I put a locking cable, a cable lock through the barrel and through the breech. And then I lock that so that when they x-ray that, they can physically see that there is a cable through the barrel and there is no possible way that gun's going to be loaded. Um, if it's guns just closed and sometimes, the, you know, they're like, I, it might, it might, maybe it looks loaded. Maybe it doesn't. Um, some play, you, I've read some where you can have the magazines loaded as long I don't even, I just avoid the issue. I put all the ammo in the box. I keep the magazines unloaded and I cable lock my pistol and then it's in a lock box and I've never had an issue. It's never been a problem. I I breeze right through. <coughs> uh, yeah, and, and Illinois is another state you don't want to uh, get caught going through <laughs> with a with a gun, um, especially a loaded gun. Uh, they don't honor me, and almost anybody else's CCW. California, New York, uh, Illinois, and some of the uh, New England states. There's a couple New England states you got to be real careful. Massachusetts and some different places that are uh, real particular about the CCWs. So there's a great app, um, a couple of great apps, actually, CCW apps on your phone. You can download them and you can click on the state and it'll tell you what the regulations are, whether you have to declare um, what states honor your uh, CCW permits and so on and so forth. So if you know you're going to be driving through half a dozen different states, make sure you download something like that and check on that you want to be legal right you don't want to take a chance uh yeah slide open cable lock you can't go wrong right there's no no ambiguity there they can x-ray that all day long and <laughs> there's no way that gun can be loaded so uh yeah right when you get to illinois you get out and you put everything in the trunk and you lock it <laughs> <laughs> any you get to any of those states you just throw everything in the trunk and get through the state and then you're good to go again so uh looks like we got about 30 people almost 30 people tuned in here uh it's a good show everybody's ready for the uh big christmas giveaway we have for you today a 10 and a half inch fully assembled ar pistol upper 556 Flash redirection can, micro hand stop, bolt carrier group charging handle. This thing's ready to rock. Drop it on your pistol lower or your SBR. If you have an SBR, you, know, you get your SBR permit and you can make an SBR out of this. Um, and it's this thing's ready to rock. Everything you need is here. Um, if you bought every single one of these components individually, uh, about $500, a little over $500 value here. Uh, typical kit value is in the 400s. If you were to buy this fully assembled and ready to go, you, you're typically going to get in, excuse me, the 400s. So, and at the last minute, we decided that uh, we were going to have a couple of extra prizes here. We're going to have a second and third place prize. We're going to give away a hat as well, one of our A-Architect BYOAR hats. And then we're going to give away a t-shirt, your choice. We've got the Fruits and Veggies t-shirt, Eat Your Veggies, Shoot Your Fruit. Or we've got the tactical girth. If somebody uh, small, because we only have these in extra large and up, right? This, the, no sense having a, a small t-shirt for a tactical girth, right? Doesn't make a lot of sense. But 
you can have either your choice if somebody small wins and they want the eat your veggie shirt they can win they can have the t-shirt which you want to do second and third for third second and then first okay we're going to do it in reverse order third second and then first we have 136 entries great yeah this is probably one of the biggest kind of entries we ever had uh so um yeah let's the hat third place for the hat okay we are going to plug in here maximum of 136 entries oops not a thousand and 136 136 and we are going to generate and we got number 13 number 13 is chris sanker chris sanker you win the hat we're gonna underline number 13 there so we make sure next we're going to give away your choice of a t-shirt tactical girth or the eat your veggies and we are going to generate again number five angie angie triplet angie triplet wins the t-shirt size and style angie we'll contact you and see what you want there okay the big drum roll the, drum roll, the ten and a half inch upper and number 12 low numbers maxwell pala pala palau maxwell palau i think maxwell's a, a pretty regular uh viewer and commenter he's usually on yeah, there he is, right? Maxwell? Number 12. Yeah, I had 136 in there. I got three low numbers. Yeah, Maxwell Palau. And he's he commented just a little bit ago. There he is. He said, wow. <laughs> All right, so if you're on here and you won... Make sure you get us your information. And uh, Angie, all right. Angie, you won the hat. No, oh, you won the t-shirt. Angie, you won a t-shirt. Tell us what size and which style. Tell us what size and which style. We got the tactical girth t-shirt. XL to 4XL. XL to 4XL or large to 4XL. 4XL. And then we've got all sizes in the shoot your fruit. So let us know what size shirt you want. And what style and we'll get that out to you maxwell give us your hit us up in uh the comments or in direct message don't don't put your address in the comments send us a direct message with your address angie i believe we have your address um uh, i think you won something and i think you won a hat or something in the past a couple months ago uh black extra large okay she wants the tactical girth shirt all right and then uh We'll get a hold. Uh, we'll get a hold of Chris Sanker, and let him know that he won the hat. Him or her? Him or her? Yeah, I'm not sure. There's a Larissa Sanker that signed up right behind Chris Sanker, so I'm assuming he told his wife, "Hey, get over here and sign up." <laughs> <laughs> All right. We are off next week. Um, we're taking the week off between Christmas and New Year's. We're taking Monday and Tuesday for Christmas, Thursday and Friday for New Year's. Everybody's taking a vacation day for Wednesday, so we're taking the whole week off. Uh, we'll we'll have a couple of timed posts going out and some different stuff popping up online. Um, <laughs> yeah, congrats to all the winners. Um, we are going to then be back the week after. Um, we're going to do bolt carrier group care and maintenance, how to disassemble a bolt carrier group, how to check the gas rings, how to inspect it for damage, um, how to clean it, oil it, and put it all back together. So uh, tune in for that. Then we're going to do, uh, uh, I forget what's 
the next the week after. Uh, uh, is it the shot show? No, no there was, there's a week in between there. Um, okay, but anyway, and then the third week we're going to be in Vegas. Uh, we will not be doing a live show. Um, we're going to be busy setting up our booths and and manning the booth. No, oh, actually, Tuesday is uh, we'll be manning both booths, right? We're going to have a booth upstairs for the supplier showcase, and we're going to have a booth down in the uh, basement on the main show. So we'll be busy manning the, the booths there, but uh, we're going to take some pictures and send some stuff along. And uh, when we come back, we're going to do a recap show, and we're going to have – we always get a ton of swag when we go out to uh, – the shot show so we're gonna compile a, a, a pile of swag hats and some different stuff that we get when we're there uh stickers velcro patches all that different kind of stuff we're gonna put together a nice little swag package and we're gonna give that away so uh we got a lot of cool stuff happening um merry christmas everybody have a safe and happy new year uh it, it's a it's a joyous time to spend with family um Everybody stay healthy, uh, and if you do go out and celebrate for New Year's and you over-celebrate, please ask someone to take you home. Please get a ride. Please stay where you're at, whatever it may be. Um, we don't want to see anybody hurt or hurt anybody else in the, the joyous festivities. So uh, have fun, but be responsible. And uh, we'll see you all here in two weeks. We'll see you next year. I can say that. <laughs> All right. Remember, you don't have to be an expert to build your own AR to upgrade it or maintain it. We're here to help you do that. We'll see you guys in a couple weeks.